A new kid is about to show up in town. This new kid is the 2015 Honda Jade and very soon it will start showing up on Kenyan roads. If you'd like to know more about this kid then hang around because that's what we will be digging deep into. Welcome to Ekevator Reviews. If you find this content helpful then please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also use the details in the description box to support the channel by donating. So this Honda Jade was in production for a short time. It was introduced in the Chinese market in 2013 and it was in fact meant exclusively for that Chinese market but later on it was introduced into the Japanese market in 2015. This is the car that replaced the Honda Stream and it is based on the 9th generation Honda Civic. Unfortunately due to dwindling sales it was discontinued in 2020 both in China and Japan so it's no longer being produced. This time let's start with the exterior and interior, then we will have a look at the other important aspects of this car. What do you think about its exterior design? It definitely looks way better than the Honda Stream that it replaced. It looks more premium, in fact it even looks better than the Toyota Wish, which is this car's main competitor. It gets LED lights at the front and back, there is this chrome strip that connects the rear lights to give it a premium look. Generally, it really lo looks nice. It will definitely turn heads. It's wider, longer and sits lower to the ground compared to the Honda Stream. Its wheelbase is also longer by 20 mm compared to the Honda Stream. This car will easily be crowned as the best looking MPV in the Kenyan market. It is marketed as an MPV but it really doesn't look like an MPV. It looks more like a station wagon. Moving on into the interior, you can get this car in two seating configurations, either as a five-seater or a six-seater. The hybrid variants will mostly come in a six-seat configuration. That is two seats at the front, two captain seats in the second row, and another two seats at the back. The dashboard design looks simple but a bit futuristic, especially due to the digital instrument cluster that is viewed above the steering wheel as opposed to through it. The infotainment screen is positioned in between the two S events. Then just below that, there are AC controls. The layout certainly looks better than that of the Honda Stream and even better than the one in the Toyota Wish. Some variants get leather electric front seats. At the second row, you can get either two captain seats for better comfort or a normal bench seat that can accommodate three passengers. The legroom should definitely be better than in the Honda Stream because its wheelbase is longer by 20 mm. There are two S events to keep the passengers at the back cool. There are also two cup holders, so if there is no passenger at the center, then the cup holders can be put to use. Finally, the last row can accommodate two average sized passengers in relative comfort. The legroom is manageable, but the headroom is limited due to that sloping roof line. So taller people may find the space back there a bit unbearable. Generally, it's more spacious than the Honda Stream. It also has a premium vibe to it. It almost looks like a class above the Toyota Wish. I reckon the interior quality of materials are also of better quality and not just plastic. So now that aside, let's now get into the technical and important stuff about this car beginning with the price. Expect to drive away a 2015 Honda Jade from around 1.7 million shillings to around 2.2 million shillings, depending on the trim level. 2016 to 2019 models are more expensive, with some reaching up to the 3 million mark, especially the 2019 models. Being a new car in the Kenyan market, it's expected that the price will definitely be high, and it may even go higher if the demand is high. As for the comprehensive insurance, I got back four offers. The highest was 84,000 shillings per annum while the lowest was 70,000 shillings per annum. There was also a quotation of 75,000 shillings and 78,000 shillings. So this is just to give you an idea of what you may be expected to pay to insure a 2015 Honda Jade. Remember it will always depend on the value of the car. The third party is 7,000 shillings per annum. Let's now move on to the engine options. In China this car was available with a 1.8 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine that was mated to a 5-speed torque converter automatic. Unfortunately, this engine option was not available in Japan. When this car was introduced into the Japanese market, it came with either a 1.5-liter turbocharged petrol engine 
or a 1.5 liter hybrid. The 1.5 liter turbo produces 148 horsepower and can sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour in 9.5 seconds. This engine is mated to a CVT gearbox. The 1.5 liter hybrid on the other hand produces 129 horsepower and it's mated to a 7 speed dual clutch gearbox. As I had said in the video comparison between the Toyota Aqua and the Honda Fit Hybrid, these dual clutch transmissions are more complex and can cost quite a lot to repair if something goes wrong. They are not very reliable compared to conventional automatics, so take note of that. If you want to watch that video comparison, there's a link in the description box. Most of the proficient mechanics who are conversant with hybrid cars now understand how hybrid cars work with the CVT transmission, but this jet hybrid just like the 2014 fit hybrid comes with that dual clutch and it may be difficult to find mechanics who understand how these dual clutch transmissions work with the hybrid powertrains. And so if something goes wrong you may find yourself in a tricky position and may end up spending a lot. So if you value reliability then the 1.5 liter turbo with the CVT is a better choice even though you will still have to watch that turbo and be keen with the maintenance of the car because once turbos blow up, it can be a very expensive fix. In terms of fuel consumption, expect around 15 km per liter in the 1.5 liter turbo, while in the 1.5 liter hybrid expect between 18 to around 25 km per liter depending on how you drive. The fuel tank is 40 liters for the hybrid variant, while for the 1.5 turbo it's 47 liters. Expect to spend around 12,000 shillings on average for the minor service after every 10,000 kilometers. That is if you use the recommended synthetic oil, but you can just service the car between 8 to 10,000 kilometers. You don't have to wait until 10,000 kilometers because our conditions here in Kenya are not similar to those in Japan. As for the major service, you may spend about 20,000 shillings on average after 15,000 kilometers. The ground clearance on this car is 140 mm. It's slightly below the recommended 165 mm clearance. So you will have to watch out for severe bumps, especially if the car is loaded. In fact, even when not loaded, this car appears to be too low to the ground. Moving on to the brakes, this car gets discs all around with the front ones being ventilated. The carb weight ranges between 1430 to 1510 kilograms. Let's now take a very short fun fact break, then we will resume and look at some of the extra features this vehicle comes with. Some of the extra features you can get with this car include paddle shifts, sunroof, cruise control, infotainment system, idling stop feature, LED lights, dual zone automatic AC, rear AC vents, electric leather seats and Honda sensing which is Honda's active safety features such as blind spot monitoring, lane watch, cross traffic alert and auto high beam headlights. So it's a well kitted car, even the base models come very well equipped. So there you have it, will this car sway people away from the Toyota Wish? I don't think so because for one it looks like a premium and expensive station wagon as opposed to an MPV. Honda Stream and Toyota Wish are often used in businesses, especially to ferry people from Nairobi to Kisumu and other towns, but this Honda Jade will most likely not be used. It just appears to be more premium and classy. It will be more suited for families than for business. Secondly, it may not be very reliable compared to the Toyota Wish and Honda Stream. This is because most of the ones that will come to Kenya will come from Japan, meaning you will either get the 1.5 liter turbo so you will have to watch, watch out for the turbo otherwise if it blows up you will have to part with lots of cash to fix it or you will have to get the 1.5 liter hybrid with the 7 speed dual clutch transmission which may also not be very reliable it's unfortunate the 1.8 liter with the 5 speed automatic was not offered in japan so it will definitely not find its way into the kenyan market that would have been the best engine and transmission to go for, especially with regard to reliability. That said, only time will truly tell how this car will perform in the Kenyan market. It's fuel efficient and it can carry 5 or 6 people in comfort. It looks good and classy and also has a 
premium vibe to it. This will certainly make a very good family car. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you have any inquiries, reach me via email or WhatsApp. Also, let me know what you think of this car. See you in the next video.